Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Welcome everybody. Thanks for visiting my channel. Going to be talking about Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Or well, Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. So here is the culmination of the first original trilogy. And I really love this movie. Granted, it has its flaws. But to be honest, 11, 12 year old me gave no fucks about the Ewoks. I didn't care. I had no critical thinking fucking skills honed at that point. Um, so you know what? As I get older, George put some blinking eyes in with his fucking CGI funny. So that, that, that worked. So a movie that has flaws, but it's a really good movie. It caps the trilogy, in my opinion, really well. Yes, there are things I might have wanted to have seen. Uh, you know, when you look back on it and you hear, okay, the Ewoks should have been Wookiee. We're going to be Wookiees. They couldn't afford it. Fine. Like I said, 12-year-old me gives no shits. You know, it's 1983. Uh, again, directed by a different director, Richard Margard. A Mars God. Maybe George Lucas again understands his place in this uh, creative process. Either way, another successful movie. The character growth from the opening scene. Um, everything is there. There are little things here and there. But when I take it in, when I think back, like I said, I didn't really care at the time. I just was just amazed to to go see the movie. Again, the toys are huge. Everything surrounding it is blown up by this point. Um, I, I'm, again, I'm getting my hands on whatever I can. Even at this time, you might even have um, the beginnings of the uh, games and the, uh, the commitment to the extended universe or the books. And I, I heard in the beginning the extended universe was approved by George Lucas, meaning when you came up with a concept or a pitch for an idea or a book, he would oh he would have to go through it and verify or okay it. Especially I think when it had to do with Luke and all those characters. So I'm um, again just to give you the mindset. I'm just I mean it's magic to me. It's the fantasy of the hero's journey. I'm captivated from the first movie. It's got me everywhere. Toys. Um, if at this point, uh, the books again, the beginnings of the video games, there's just everything. You can't do nothing wrong. I watched this movie again and again, and the fight with Vader at the end and the music cue might be my favorite scene captured and in the well not even the whole trilogy let's say for the whole franchise yes it probably has a bias with the age the revelation of his sister and vader knows and luke overpowers vader and the emperor gets to shine in this movie just everything works for me the rescue of Han Solo in the beginning. Now, there's some extended or cuts that were like you would want them in the movie. There's a scene where Luke puts his lightsaber together. I think it's a. I don't know if it was put in a special version. I think it was. And that adds a big impact to it. But he's dressed in black clothing. He's kind of like threatens Jabba. It just has a. Uh, um, it took a little. It took chances in this world where this naive farm boy uh, learns his heritage and he declares himself a Jedi like his father at the end and the the you know the the awe and I guess to the 12 year old the shock that Vader helps his son at the end which is all a shit on in the new movies because it's all for nothing but I guess I'll get into that eventually and again 
looking back at the fanboy in me, I love the third movie, Return of the Jedi. It was just fondness. It makes the first trilogy great, in my opinion. Looking at it critically, yeah, it's got flaws. Um, there's little lulls in the action adventure where it, it's not it's not done as well as it was in the other movies. And I think you could have done a lot more with it, but that's, you know, little nitpicks here and there. This is the Luke and Leia thing. The Han, Han, whatever you want to call it. Um, because now we got the Solo movie. We know where it comes from. Oh, boy. I can at least respect people who go, you know what? The Return of the Jedi is the weakest of the first three movies. And I make agree, but I watch it more than I do the first one. So, maybe it's more enjoyable for me to watch, but critically taking a step back can understand that the first movie is a better made movie and that could be debatable i'm not against that it's just you know as a whole and i go back to them and usually don't get me wrong i do usually watch them all three at once but if there's those times where the first one's on tv and i'm not gonna go to watch it and look at it or um put a set of time to watch it but i do i think in retrospect i did that more often for return of jedi because nowadays anything's on demand right i mean we can all go online wherever we want if you got the paid services or not you're gonna be able to watch whatever you want to watch so i'm talking about the age gap difference you know this movie came out in 83 i'm about 12 and from then on, with the advent of VCR or Betamax, as I can remember that, but VCRs, and then you got your WHT, HBOs, and voila, you know, we're here now. But in that term, there's different um, versions he's putting out, specials. I mean, he was notorious for it. I don't know if you call it genius, money hungry, you know. But the vision stay true in my opinion there was a focus there was a progression that paid off in all the characters and the even the droids i mean what they do with the droids these days is ridiculous and you had such an opportunity with bb-8 it's just mind-blowing oh you got a character like uh boba fett who becomes like uh bigger than he should be he had nothing to do with the movies and in the larger part but even the ancillary stuff seems to work and they just don't know how to do that anymore look at captain uh, was it phasma uh brianne from uh game of thrones the actress they propped her up women this women that and they just did nothing with her she was garbage in the movies a shiny whatever stormtrooper when you had gold there you know what even if you made the mistake in the force awakens and you didn't use her well enough you had the opportunity in the next two movies to just she could have taken over the franchise as the baddie i mean that's the potential i think she had but we're talking about the original trilogies and this is the end cap for the first three movies even though, like i said the boba fett's uh get their due but they're in it and it's like I think comic books and uh, fan fiction. There's so much going on with Boba Fett was spit out by the creature and he got away. And um, you know, I'm not sure how much they. Well, everything's been thrown out. I think with the selling of Star Wars. But I think you can't go wrong when you watch all three movies. This is not going to be a. Uh, a letdown experience it has its moments and maybe there's more eye-rolling moments and a couple more uh, uh, out of place scenarios and like a little bit it makes you question things a little bit but like I said these are things that I could just look back at now that I'm <clears throat> you know a certain age and I'm seeing these new movies come out it even lets me appreciate the chances they took yeah, you wanted to make an uh, army of uh, Chewbacca's or Wookiees. But no, we had to make these little fucking creatures. <laughs> it's just... They made it work for me. I mean, yeah, 
I can see a new generation and and later generations from what it had to kind of question things and look at it differently. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, Return of the Jedi is not perfect. It's doesn't have the tone and the pacing that Empire had. And if you want to debate it and get real critical, I can even see people's point of view where the first movie is better. But you're looking at it as a whole. It's the third movie. It's it's fulfilling. Really fulfilling, especially at the end. You feel like it's all come together. This is what is a promise of that future of this fantasy world. And the wonders that will happen in this future. Now, the weird thing is, in my role-playing days that had started out now, I played in a world that existed right after the movies. Uh, my characters in the game and other characters, or even when I started being a game master or dungeon master for Star Wars, and they had their own role-playing system that we used. So, growing with it from the toys, the experience, the magic, I started delving into it from a creative point and continuing the story of Luke and Han and Leia uh, their children, even including the E, they call it the EU, the extended universe, but it's the book, the, the only outside law, the Dark Horse Comics and other companies. Even some of the current stuff that was done by Marvel was pretty good. I looked into it, you know, I had some promise here and there. I just, uh, you know, want to give props to one of the best trilogies ever. And yes, I can understand the bias and being a kid. It's just magic looking back at it. But the new movies just put such a shitty uh, taste in my mouth. I just don't want to think of their potential future with how they set it up. Going back and revisiting these, I keep that line between, you know what? You're not going to be able to hurt my love of these movies. No matter how much they fuck everything up, they shit on everything. They're not going to make my love for the original movies go away. I'm not going to not want to watch them as much. No, but you are going to turn me off from your future endeavors. And that's a shame. I think, I think I'm being a little too lenient in times when I say, oh, you know what? Maybe this is not my Star Wars or what they're doing with Star Trek. And I say, okay, you know, I'm getting older and I'm a little bit more into the campy stuff. I even appreciate the old Batman show rather than the new Nolan uh, stuff. I think they're overrated, although I love Batman Begins. I'm not a big fan of the next two. The third one is shit. But, you know, is it me? Is it my growing up? Is it, you know, I'm changing and I look at things differently. And looking at the original trilogy, I think this is a great end. It does most of the stuff right. It's got a good pacing. The music, again, you just can't lose with John Williams and although when you look at the new ones and his name is attached I don't buy it too much that he has that much of a you know influence except for the you know, look he's fucking old I think he was old when he was doing these movies Return of the Jedi just was a great ending maybe not the greatest movie ever flaws it's a little bit uh, ridiculous at some points but in the whole picture I think it's done very well I recommend it of course the video games were awesome at the time you know, I, I'm trying to remember what came out at this time um, but I remember playing the games that went back and I think it was like the Nintendo was the first really good ones Maybe I'll get into those eventually also. But this is the end of the story. This is the culmination of a uh, hero's journey in more than one. And I, and I say this a lot, but the growth of the characters were awesome. Han Solo's maturity is coming to, you know, understand where his place is. Luke's uh, questioning himself is... Uh, resentment at the Jedi for lying to him and Jedi by Obi-Wan and Yoda 
not telling him Vader was his father. Those moments are forever ingrained in me. They enhance the trilogy. I think if you even try to take them apart, I think you can see the overall puzzle picture is phenomenal. Uh, rare time in history. And I will forever cherish these movies. Give my respect to George Lucas and his vision. And yes, I could shit on what he says now and whatever. But hey, look, this is a, you know, this is what we do through life. We're all human, and Star Wars will be always a, always have a special place in my heart. Take care, everybody. I'll see you all next time. Till then.